Hello and welcome back to Speed Demon Painting. Today we are taking a look at the full rulebook for Armored Clash which can be bought alongside the introductory sets but which is included as well in the one player starter sets. Now I already have a video up about the quick play rules which can be found in the introductory sets. This is actually the full experience and you can see what is all in here in the overview on page 1. It has a lot more in-depth rules so it's not just the quick play rules that you can use if you sort of grown out of them you can swap to this book, the full experience. It is an absolutely lovely bit of, uh, of work with uh, full color pages all over the place lovely detail to it and uh, a very handy little layout as well where you can find different rules that it is cross-referencing along the way. Now you'll notice that there are quite a few things that it has in common with the quick start rules because uh, I said a neat thing about it, it was that you didn't really have to unlearn any rule, any rules from the quick play rules, you just have to learn a couple of new ones to add more depth to it. So the point of this video isn't to go over all of the rules in details, I'm going to make another video for that one once the digital document is released, but I do want to show you the different rule books and the major ways in which the full rule set deviates from the quick play rule so you sort of have an idea of what to expect if you buy this book. One such example is for instance the size that is mentioned here on this page. It will determine what kind of terrain you can hide behind, uh, when other models are going to be blocking line of sight, when it is going to uh, uh, conceal those different units and so on and so on. The main core concepts are still the same, you still work with arcs and everything, but some rules are added to it, such as, for instance, here. Uh, big behemoths aren't in the introductory sets, so explaining how they move isn't exactly necessary, so why include it in those quick play rules? There are also quite a few other things, such as unit statuses, which are have way more depth in the full rules, and there's also a lot more to be said about being in cover, behind terrain, etc, etc. Now the biggest way that it deviates the main rules from the quick play rules is the addition of these cards, which is the Command and Conquest deck. This is largely used for discipline tests, because every now and then your troops are going to be losing models, they are going to be shaken up a bit by what goes on the battlefield, and they have to take these tests. The layout of these cards is a bit familiar compared to what people from Dystopian Wars know. One side will have a command, which gives you a temporary power-up, and one side will have a, uh, a conquest uh, text which will allow you to score additional victory points. But there's also a card number on there that uh, makes you pass a discipline test whenever you're called upon it. That only goes from 1 to 12 in this case, and you have to draw a card that is below the discipline value of your troops in order to pass it. This also means that you will be going through your deck a lot faster than you would during an average game of Dystopian Wars, and your uh, communications can even break down if you overdo it with drawing cards, so you have to be a bit more careful with how and when to spend it, or even voluntarily fail discipline tests. Another major deviation is the use of combat rating, and combat rating gives you bonuses by aiming or being in short range, but also some penalties such as being uh, suppressed as a unit because it failed a discipline test or the target being concealed. And this combat rating is used both in a close combat uh, way and in a shooting way, and that is going to determine what type of dice you can reroll and which you are not allowed to reroll depending on what your combat rating is. You can have a standard attack, an amplified bonus attack, or you could have a, a sort of a suppressed attack where you will not be allowed to reroll as many things as you would normally. There are also cool other additions to the rules, such as the ability to go on uh, an overlook. Uh, that means that you're not shooting during that activation, but that you're allowed to shoot when uh, your opponent has just activated a unit, just so that you can suppress them and damage that unit before they do their big amount of damage, which is really, really cool, but it comes with a penalty on that combat rating as well, so you can't just, you know, put your whole army on wait and see mode, you do have to use it sparingly and appropriately. 
There are also quite a few rules in this rulebook that uh, will be used in conjunction with the new orbats that have been released. I plan on making a video really, really quickly about how these new orbats are uh, made up, what sort of rules you can find inside of them, etc, etc. But I will be going on vacation to Italy for the next weekend, so I hope to have that one done by next week. And if you look forward to that video, make sure that you subscribe to the channel for when that video comes. Another big new aspect of gameplay is how to play your different missions, how to score uh, victory points, what those different uh, mission objective counters are and how you should use them, and that is covered in this one as well. Along with what the different terrain pieces are, how big you should be aiming to make them, what type of terrain there is, impassable terrain, dense terrain, what are obstacles, all these sort of things. So you can have a bit more interaction with your terrain than you could with your introductory rule set. There are also some really cools on how you can uh, put your models inside of buildings to capture them so they are a bit more protected against incoming fire for instance. And yeah, you have the ability to make a really cool and interactive battlefield using these different rules. It works very similarly as the uh, rules for transporting units in uh, you know, things like, uh, for instance, the Sterling transport for the crown and uh, they go into that in more details as well. They also go into more details about the different traits that units can have, how the different armament grids work, and how they work for the big new unit that is introduced as well, the behemoth landships. There are also some rules in here for aircraft, how they are used, but I've been told with a, by a recent video on, uh, on Tabletop that these are the most basic rules for aircraft that you can get, and that they ex uh, plan to expand these rules uh, in the near future. Well next summer is when it was the sort of the rough timing for that. And if I have to give a big overview of what I think of the rulebook, I think this is quite nice because it feels a lot more modular, if you will, than for instance the Dystopian Wars rule set. There are a couple of rules that you can, can just ignore altogether for your first game, such as dolls for behemoths, aircraft, etc. And uh, you can still have a very fun time doing a hybrid between the quick start rules and the full rules, depending on well what you plan to do as uh, players, uh, what kind of game you you want to have and that is really really cool the whole rule book basically just cross references to each uh, each section uh, and that makes it quite easy to follow along with the whole thing and then finally if you're a dystopian war player who isn't quite interested yet in uh, Armored Clash, for instance, because, well, your faction isn't out yet. Uh, it's still worth to pick up this rulebook, even if it's just for the lore that is found in the back. Um, half of this book is different tidbits of lore about, uh, well, all eight factions, of course, which are present in here, as you can clearly see from this picture. They go over what each faction is, essentially, uh, for each one of them, giving them a short description of where they are, what their sort of uh, keywords are for the nation, as a, a nation identity, if you will, or a faction identity. And it goes into these cool tidbits, which are sort of spy reports in some cases, about uh, what they found out about the Alliance, and also a small tidbit about the most common infantry soldier found within each faction. For instance, in this one with the Commonwealth, you get the general gist of it and then a spy report that has been filled out that you can read. You do have to be able to read cursive, but I hope that's not too much of an issue. And then the Ryadoryov troopers, I hope I said that one right, are their main soldiery unit. All in all, even if you're getting this one just for the lore, I believe the MSRP for this uh, book was about 12 euros, which is you know, 12, 10, a bit over 10 pounds or 15 dollars. Uh, depends on your local currency, of course, but uh, it is very high quality. For a full color book with this amount of pages in an A5 format, you can't really go very wrong. And it's got the occasional really cool little thing, such as this thing, the uh, blueprint of the Empire Fangun tank, which uh, just yeah makes it feel like a very quality product. And uh, the people who have worked on this are rightfully proud to have made it because it looks really, really nice. 
The artwork that can be found in the book as well is absolutely top notch, especially this, well, also almost gruesome picture of the citizen soldiers found within the Enlightened. Those of you familiar with the Wild West Exodus setting will know that, uh, well, the Enlightened are ex aren't exactly nice guys, they do pretty horrible things to human beings to experiment on them, and that is really well captured in this as well. It's uh, it's an absolutely gorgeous bit of art, and you get the occasional little uh, preview of the units that are to come, uh, as I'm pretty sure most of you who were paying attention to the B-roll footage running in the background will have noticed. There was also recently a video on the On Tabletop uh, YouTube channel where they were talking about what the different plans are for it. And it's actually nice to see how uh, Wild West Exodus starts playing a bigger role in the miniature design for uh, for this one, for Armored Clash, because, uh, well, quite a lot of the models that are in Wild West Exodus are going to be reimagined in this 10mm uh, scale, and that looks really, really cool. I'm particularly looking forward to the land ship that is to come for the Union, uh, where they were even talking about doing things such as magnetizing different parts of these behemoths, which all just sounds really cool to me. And then finally, in the back of the rulebook, we have another summary and a quick reference charts for all the different rules that can be found in here. I do hope to see a few charts made by War Cradle Studios on some hard cardboard, so you can always have them ready during gameplay as well, because I did miss that a bit in the two-player starter set, The Battle for Singapore. All in all though, I am incredibly impressed with this rulebook, it being full colour and uh, very easy to flick through thanks to all the cross references and with a healthy bit of lore found in the back of it, it's even interesting to pick up if you're not really interested in Armoured Clash but just want to learn more about the dystopian age. That is it for me for now though, I do hope to see you in the next video, which will either be the review of the Orbats or, if I get it done in time, a uh, painting guide on how I painted my different uh, crown units that I've done so far. And I've actually shown you a little sneak peek of some of them in the background right now. And uh, if you're interested in seeing how this is done, definitely subscribe to the channel and I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, bye!